So first of all, I want to say thank you so much, uh, Rabbi Josh, Debbie, and Beth, and all of you for letting me do this amazing uh, tour. Uh, this is completely never done before. I feel more like a journalist today than anything else, not your chazan, but more of a, maybe a chazan, uh, a, a, a messenger or a bridge, because uh, I'm about to show you the streets of uh, Jerusalem on Shushan Purim. Um, and we start our tour in Measharim, a place that many people don't venture to go. <laughs> um, already with my smartphone out, I've been already looked at um, with some, some interesting glances. But I want to show you the contrast of how Measharim uh, celebrates Shushan Purim versus uh, the Shuk, the Machane Yehuda, the market. Um, I think it's really important to understand Jerusalem and understand um, the variety of types of uh, way of celebrating Purim. Um, and I'll explain more about Shushan Purim on our journey. At this moment, I'm going to turn my camera around and I'm going to um, just show you what's going on. Okay, so I'm in a little alleyway. This is called Army Taxis. Get off the main road because I don't want to be seen for too long with my smartphone out. At any point, I, if I get cut out, I will uh, apologize. It's not my fault. So you can see everyone's kind of dressed up, a little bit different costumes here. Down there is um, is more uh, into the heart of uh, Maya Sharem. And this way is into Geula, which is less, uh, it's already becoming more of like the center of town. Um, right now, there's not much going on, but three minutes ago, and you can look at my Facebook, there were two mass, massive vans blasting Hasidic music, people dancing on the rooftop of the moving vans on Purim. I assume they were already under the influence because uh, otherwise, I don't know why they'd ever think that's a normal uh, idea. But that's, um, so it's a little quiet here so far. Here, I'm not going to show you too much of the kids because I don't feel like for Here, Haman up top, you see Haman hanging. In a minute, you're going to see an effigy of Haman hanging from the top of a little scary, actually, but uh, people take this very seriously here. Uh, can you see Haman hanging? It, 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 you can answer, so I know that what you see. You see that? Does anyone can see, see that? Get a, you can see it. Okay. Yes. So here we are. Haman is hanging, but there's a face on Haman, and it looks like the mayor of Jerusalem. You're getting a little bit of a taste of where I am. Not very appreciative of... Uh, of uh, <laughs> The mayor. And, and by the way, this tour is supposed to be extremely like, um, you know, I don't want to give any like bad impressions of anybody. I just want you to see the streets. So right now it's pretty quiet because it's still early, but you can see everyone's kind of walking towards their, uh, from Megillah reading towards their parties, wherever they're going to. Um, so um, basically, we're walking now from Mech Sharim towards Geula, and then we're going to walk up the famous Strauss Street, um, and we're going to walk over the hill, which will lead us to uh, Jaffa Street. When we get to Jaffa, we'll make a right towards the Shuk Machane Yehuda, and there, really, you'll see a bigger contrast of what type of party's going on. Um, so it's gotten very quiet over the last two minutes since I was here. Like I got here five minutes ago and there was so much going on and now it seems very quiet. So I'm going to turn you around. So I don't know if you know, but um, Shushan Purim is the holiday that it's Purim, but a day later because the story of Purim tr took time to travel and the, um, the cities that were enclosed by a wall uh, like Jerusalem uh, didn't receive the miracle of Purim until a day later. So we celebrated a day later after everyone. I don't know, Rabbi Josh might be able to tell you, but I don't know if there's another city in the world um, that celebrates Shushan Purim. Uh, the rules are, I'm sorry about the noise. Uh, I'll give it a second. I don't know why I pull here. It's an ambulance. One sec. Yeah, so really any walled city could celebrate Shushan Purim. Um, but uh, I think Jerusalem is the only one that does. Yeah, because the, I think also uh, it had to have been walled 
when the uh, story of Purim or during the Talmud or something, some, something like that. So technically, if there were Jews living in yeah, Jericho, yeah, yeah, we can't just build up a wall around San Diego and say now we're celebrating Shushan Purim. Yes, it, 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 exactly. So, um, so Jerusalem is the city that celebrates Purim a day later. Which is awesome, because if you live in Israel, the, the trick is to celebrate Purim in Tel Aviv on, or you, like the way we celebrated, in, you celebrated in San Diego uh, last night, this morning. And so t- that's when Tel Aviv celebrated it. And then they come, the Tel Aviv, they can come up to Jerusalem to celebrate Shushan. So they get two full days of partying. Um, I will have you know, because we're on a tour and I felt like I should share some different philosophies of the holiday that um, there's a famous professor that's very well known uh, named Yishawa Leibowitz, who was a, a, a wonderful uh, professor. He was my father's professor and probably Rabbi Josh definitely knows of him. And he disliked the holiday so much because of the, what the holiday asks of us to wipe out Haman and his family in Amalek, that he decided that on Shushan, on regular Purim, he was in Jerusalem, and on Shushan Purim, he went to Tel Aviv. He never celebrated Purim. He thought it was a, a disgraceful uh, Jewish holiday, and he felt like if he wasn't ever in a place that was actually celebrating, he was uh, not obligated, uh, according to Halacha, to uh, follow uh, that rule. So that's Yishau Leibowitz. Um, so you can already see that depending on if you want to party or not, uh, you, can, you can hold by that. So I'm going to turn my camera around for a second so you can see Kikar Shabbat, which is a famous Kikar. Um, one sec. I'm going to turn my camera around. One sec. Let me do that. So this is Kikar Shabbat. It's a very famous Kikar. What, what I mean by Kikar, uh, um, a main uh, intersection in Jerusalem uh, known for um, much. Uh, basically, over here, going up that way, is the center of town, non orthodox Haredi area. But over here is uh, the intersection that if you make a right here, you go into Measharim. If you make a left, you go into Geula. And it's more very religious. And this is where people say, like, if you come here, it's not so, it's not so pleasant. But we're going to go up. Throughout the tour, uh, you're going to hear um, probably explosions. Don't worry. They're not terrorist attacks. For some reason, Israelis think, that, think it's funny um, to, to light off rockets on, on Purim um, and scare everyone thinking that it's a, a terrorist attack. I, I don't get the humor. It's called dark humor. Israelis love it. Um, and I, you will hear a lot of rockets going off um throughout our tour so now we have a little bit of a walk up south street do anyone does anyone have any questions because it's going to be about five minutes before we get to anywhere specifically special okay so i'll keep i'll keep talking um well you know what i'll turn my camera while we walk so you can just see it seems very quiet but you'll see that people are wearing costumes um this guy is dressed up as a, a Haredi Jew. No, I'm kidding. He's actually Haredi. Um, so basically, um, Jerusalem celebrates Shushan Purim a day later, but it takes it very seriously because one of the um, one of the uh, Kabbalistic uh, interpretations of uh, the Megillah is that um, the whole story of Shushan. And the whole story of Purim actually takes place uh, here in Jerusalem. And that maybe possibly the king Ahasuerus is, uh, is, uh, is pro- it could be a, 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 another uh, word for, for God. Um, and that the whole story is one big costume for, for um, the way things can be if we choose to act up against uh, against anti-Semitism. Here's a fun group of uh, costume wearing Yidim. Alan. Here we go. Alan. Um, so again, we're walking up South Street. So 
Um, now, uh, just a little bit of background about uh, the street that we're on. In general, this is kind of like the separation between Haredi Jerusalem and modern, uh, you know, modern Jerusalem. And unfortunately on, Sh on Shabbat, very often you have uh, um, people coming up to the next street that we're about to get to, kind of uh, rioting against people driving on Shabbat, which isn't really nice, but uh, it's important to point out. So again, it's a little bit quiet, um, but uh, we're making our way towards the market from Mea Sharim. <clears throat> um, here you can see someone's dressed as Santa Claus over there. There's Santa Claus, there's an Israeli with a flag, there's maybe Moses, and then here's a fire, the kid is a fireman. As we get closer to uh, where the crowds are, you'll see tons of people in costume. Um, in fact, if you're not wearing a costume on Shushan Purim, you're the odd one out. It reminds me a little bit of when I spent Halloween in the village in New York City. I was like the only one not wearing a costume and I felt very out of place. Um, so here, this is a some sort of yeshiva a Hasidic yeshiva, I'll tell you in a second. Adatia Oraita. Is it yeshiva? Oraita is a social. It's a kila in the United Kila in the United States. Is it a Here you go. Here's some, uh, some wonderful Hasidim coming out of a, of a yeshiva. Oh, Hagpurim, Hag. Ayehudi Masechod Rashanim. Very uh, typical Jerusalem. You just start singing here and people start singing. All right, so now we went over the hill and we're getting to Jaffa Street where uh, more of the secular and also religious parties are happening and um, craziness. So I want to just uh, say that um, I really, really enjoyed the um, the uh, spiel yesterday. It was very well done. All right, okay. Again, we're, we're really, by the way, this, is not, this, this man over here is not wearing a costume. This is the normal, normal maybe like uh, a way of dressing uh, on a normal day, okay? So here we go, next intersection, and then we are going down to Jaffa. Sorry if it's a little crazy. Remember this, this whole tour is kind of a, is a, is a experiment. Uh, feel free if you have any questions to ask or to, to add anything you wanna say. I hear some music coming. Is this the Nachman mobile? The Hasidic mobile, Here, here's a Nachman car. This is like a normal scene in Jerusalem, but on Purim, it's extra short. This is their regular car in Jerusalem, blasting techno. So that's like your typical uh, Nachman mobile. As, when I say Nachman mobile, I mean uh, the sect of Hasidim that, that their Rebbe is Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. I often quote him. I think we all quote him when we say, Kol haulam kulo gesher tamo. That's his words. And um, so that's the, the, the Hasidei Nachman, the, the, the Nachman who's the Rebbe, uh, the Hasidim that are following Rabbi Nachman. Here's a fun costume over here on the left. So here's Jaffa, okay? We're getting to Jaffa in a second. Here's a fun costume, if you can see it. Double check if you can see it. All right, we're getting to a little bit more like midtown Jerusalem. 
it's very cold here. It's very odd. In general, around Purim, it's already in the 60s and 70s, more like San Diego weather. But uh, for some, I don't know, today, uh, in the last couple of days, we had snow on Tuesday. So here we go. Walking through the crowd, starting to get, we're getting there. Again, you'll hear a lot of bangs for the next, uh, all right, here we go. So this is like your typical amount of people on Jaffa. Remember, there are no, almost no tourists. Um, unfortunately, this is the uh, scene of the Sparrow, uh, the Sparrow uh, terrorist attack. It's now a bakery, uh, but this is where Sparrow was uh, uh, bombed by a suicide bomber. Um, yeah. So here, this is Jaffa Street, and you can see all the way down there, there's a lot of police, but the party's starting. In about an hour and a half, this, there'll be no room to walk. Uh, it's a typical Purim scene on Jaffa, is that from here all the way to the old city, you're not able to see any, you're not able to move. Uh, it's just music blasting, people that are celebrating uh, Purim. There you go, you see a lot of people wearing costumes. I see uh, the big costume this year, is um uh what's that show on netflix uh it's the uh the gang from uh from england from birmingham uh what are they called peaky blinders that's a big one peaky blinders all right so here we go now we're heading towards the shook we're walking up jaffa everyone's in costume for big outing in general also you bump into like you know, a couple of people you know while you're walking. Um, this is a community in San Diego. Live. You want to say a blessing for the community? Hey, I bless you guys. Let's do it. Yeah. I bless you guys. Accept who you are. Don't give a shit. You do what you want. I don't they hear you. Don't give a shit about what other people think. Do you be the best you can and make an effect on the world? That's it. Oh, I got That's All right, we're going to get a lot of that. <laughs> get ready for a lot of that type of stuff. So we're walking up again, like I said, Jaffa. And. Uh, you can, you can see since Corona, maybe since the last time you came to Israel, things have changed. There's no really traffic on this road. It's just, uh, it's just the train tracks. Here comes the, uh, the train, the famous kind of monorail that they built in Jerusalem. Here it comes. But what it did was it made this street very quiet and except for the train once in a while, it's very nice to walk on Jaffa. Oh yeah, another big costume this year I've seen is um, that show on Netflix uh, that takes place in Korea. I think it's called the, Je the Jellyfish Games. What's it called? I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but it's- uh, Squid Game. Squid Games, the Squid Games. Yeah, everyone's wearing those costumes as well. Here we go, look at these, this, this is fun. Got the devil. Got a- also, I, I want to apologize in advance that um, people aren't so politically correct here. It hasn't really yet, you know, it's, uh, Israel's in the, it's in the process of becoming more politically correct. It still has a long way to go. So I apologize if you see or hear anything offensive from, from the outside. Um, it's just a different city and culture, as you know, so. Here we go. So uh, over here is the famous Binyan Klau. Um, here, here's a fun costume. Um, the famous Binyan Klau, which uh, actually has like this kind of like apparently Soviet Union vibe of like a big block building, but uh, they turned it into like a really cultural place. A lot of good stores, but also really 
they have concerts in the mid uh in the middle of the uh in the building it's a really ugly building but they made it very uh cultural all right some more crackers going off so here we go <laughs> i have no idea if this is entertaining i remember this is all an experiment i uh I read Megilla for you guys first chapter and also uh, this evening for a uh, community here in uh, Jerusalem. So, uh, oh, look at this costume. You gotta see this. Look at this, this is, this is professional. Wow. Wow, that's cool. Um, I think I'm scaring away people with the camera. So um, yeah, so this is a little bit different from Masharim. Uh, it has a little bit of a different vibe. I, I, I wish you could have seen what happened like a minute before I joined the, uh, the call. There was crazy music going on in Masharim as well, but um, we missed it. So again, we're getting to the show. Here we go. Um, Some other uh, customs that you may have heard of on uh, on Purim is to get extremely uh, here. Here's a uh, Thomas Shelby from the uh, from that show I was telling you about. There you go. See another one of those um, Peaky Blinders. Another custom on Purim that you might have heard of is getting completely drunk, um, and that's based off of a true tradition that you're supposed to. Uh, drink until you don't know the difference between uh, Haman and Mordechai. Um, clearly that's a problematic thing um, to ask people to get that drunk and to say it's a mitzvah to do so. So uh, one of the ways that people do it is they dress up crazy and um, and they try to pretend that you know they're somebody else. That's another way of Making the not knowing the difference between uh, <laughs> uh, what was that? What was the same Mordechai and Esther? I didn't see that last uh, that last message. Feel free to talk because I can't always look at the messages. All right, so it's getting busier, getting closer to the show. So, um What's very interesting about Yom Purim uh, and a little bit of uh, Torah, a little bit of a Devatoa here, is that in a way it's its, it's, a, its own costume because the holiday is all about um, what's hidden and what's secret and what's not seen. Um, and in fact, there are those who say it's like the holiest holiday. Uh, if you think about it, Yom Purim and Yom HaKippurim. Yom Kippurim, the, the holiest holiday on the Jewish holiday, on the Jewish uh, calendar, is they say Yom Kippur. It's like Purim. Purim is supposed to be the the almost maybe the maybe the holiest holiday. What? How can it be? Like, look how crazy things are. We're all very into our um, physical selves and feeding ourselves and drinking, but that's the point. Is that sometimes what we see is not really what's true that sometimes you have to dig deeper to understand the truth and to see that uh even a holiday like forum that's all about partying and having fun could be the holiest of holies so here's a little pub Hamoti, famous very famous uh restaurant here in jerusalem if you ever want to eat cheap brains you come to Hamoti. they serve basically traditional oh my god <laughs> Well, that's Corona on my phone right there. Um, <laughs> so here we go. Kodalva. Uh, she said that my costume is great. Again, I feel like a journalist now. I don't even feel like a cantor. What a wonderful opportunity for me. Here's a... Yala, yala, tachena. <laughs> so 
here's Beer Bazaar. Beer Bazaar is a new kind of famous um, pub that opened up and serves only Israeli beer. So here is the entrance to the Shook. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to get in to the Shook tonight. We have like big security because the party is happening in the Shook. You can see, I'm, I'm giving you guys like a, vi a view that nobody else gets. All the way up. If you were seven feet tall, you get that view. All the way through the Shook. We're going to go to the outside Shook. Oh, and here comes the train. Whoa, whoa. I'm alive. I'm alive. Don't worry. Um, we almost got hit by the train. All right, so we're walking. We're going to go to the outside market to get into the inside market. The, trick, the tricks of living in Jerusalem, but I'm not sure it's going to work because there's also a huge, huge line to get into the uh, outside truck, but there's still more tricks to, to get in. So uh, again, the party is just really getting started. I mean, it hasn't really started yet. Um, so here's the outside truck, a big line to get in to the party. It's a little bit quieter. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get in. And I'm not sure I wanna wait in this line. So I'm going to uh, turn you around. It, what, what's funny about all this is that uh, in general, I bump into like people I know and I haven't, I haven't yet. So uh, we're gonna go around. If, if any of you want to uh, say anything or ask me to go somewhere, if you see something cool, you want it to be explained, feel free to, to turn on your microphone and let me know, okay? Oh no, I did something, cancel. Um, all right, so I'm gonna turn you around and we're gonna go around instead of through the, the normal way of going, we're gonna go around, here we go. Always a heavy police force. Um, this road has the famous Machna Yehuda restaurant that's like one of the greatest chefs in Jerusalem. I feel like Seth might be able to tell you more about Machna Yehuda than I can, or those who have been here. Um, but uh, what's interesting about Jerusalem is that the, uh, the shuk, the, the market where people used to buy vegetables and meat for their, their normal day has turned into like this unbelievable uh, culinary um, kind of uh, holy land. I don't know what else to say. People do pilgrimage to the Shuk in Jerusalem to eat amazing food. Um, and here you can see every restaurant's open. Okay, look, it's here it's, uh, it's 1030 and these restaurants will be open until about three or four in the morning. Here's one of my favorite restaurants, Ishtabach, which is Kurdi food. It's meat and pastry. It's unbelievable. There's Machane Yuda. Okay, here you see, we got in. We got into the Shuk. I think we got through the Shuk, or maybe not yet. We're making our way. This is Crave. American food is taken over here. This is kosher like cheeseburger. They kind of figured out a way to make cheese par of. And uh, they now serve cheeseburgers that are kosher. Um, all right, Seger Burger is a very famous high-end burger. And we're making our way, look at these. Bert and Ernie, Bert and Ernie. Here we go, we're going up the street. It's gonna be a big line over here, but we're gonna try to get in. So the holiday is pumping. People are having fun. Um, it's again. I, I really don't know if there's anything like this in the world. I really don't know. That Purim in Jerusalem is. It's really crazy. I mean, I've been to Tel Aviv, and it's also really crazy. But I really think uh, in Jerusalem, it's unbelievable. It's a little bit of a different vibe. All right, we're in the shuk now. We bypassed all those lines. And now um, we're gonna get a little bit of a view of what's going on here. Look, here's a chopper. 
All right, I don't know if we're gonna get into this place. It might be too loud anyways. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try another entrance. So something very interesting that's happened, um, all the stores late at night, they shut their, uh, their, their doors and they had this artist paint all these um, like legendary Jerusalemites. Oh, do they sell hamantash in the shop? Yeah, they absolutely do. We'll find a place to, to get home and fashion. And I'll try it for all of you. I'll, I'll make a bracha. You'll be, you'll be your say on my blessing over the home and fashion. So here we are. They're not letting anybody in. So never mind. We're not going in. So we can hang out outside. I mean, I'll be honest. We're all very lucky we haven't seen like people throwing up yet. I hate to say, it. here's a costume store. And there's the famous keepers. So we just walked through the outdoor shop and now we're on Agripas. And here you can see, I'm gonna show you in a minute what I told you when the doors close at night, they paint these legendary, um, these legendary people in Israeli uh, history. Oh my God, here's Kibunim Kids. Hey guys, because I'm on a live tour. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, my community in San Diego. You guys want to see him? Adio, adio, querida. Non quiero la vida. Man, I'm, you guys just made me look really good. Thank you so much. Where are you off to? Hi, San Diego. All right, go have fun. There you go. So those are some kids I taught some music to. Um, so here, yeah. So what I was saying is, so you can see Rabbi Gorin, the, guy, the rabbi who blew the shofar uh, when uh, Israel liberated uh, Jerusalem in the Six Day War. So all over the closed doors at night in the shuk, there are legendary characters of Israel's history. Um, I don't know who all of them are. I wish I did. For instance, uh, here's another one. Um, I don't know who he is, but he's a legend, apparently. Anyways, this is the Agrippa Street, one of the main arteries of. No, with you. No, not with me. With you. <laughs> this is this is from San Diego, California. Happy Purim! Tada! 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 Oh, great. Anashim Chachaminosh, the same from organization. Very similar. So that. All right, so here you go. So main artery of Jerusalem completely shut down. No cars coming through. You can just walk freely here. Uh, this is where you come to get Rabbi Josh's favorite rugelach, marzipan. But at this point, they're closed. So what's this place? Sweet Nation. Let's see if they have home and pots in here. They have something. Oh, they have baklava. What do they have? Wow, look at this. This is this is nice. They have baklava. Here you go. I'm gonna give you the tour. Ooh. Wow, look at this. Look at these pastries. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> I don't see Humantashin actually. Weird. All right, we'll keep going. Um, okay, so we're on Agrippas. The shuk, the outdoor shuk is just getting more and more. Did all the older people go to bed? No, they're out. They're out partying. 
Um, I mean, you're 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 looking at one. Um, you know, still out. Um, yeah. So look at this. This is uh, just a normal a normal forum. Now, by the way, it's only what ten thirty, as I said, eleven, almost eleven. Word. Word. There you go. Word. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, we're. <laughs> There's a lot of people here from San Diego, California. I might have offended him by recording him, so he recorded me. Um, some people are still working. This is not a costume. This is a worker getting ready for the week or the or Shabbat. Tomorrow is Shabbat, and many people tomorrow are going to come uh, to buy here and get ready for their Shabbat. Um, okay, so it's still crazy here. By twelve thirty at night, you will not be able to walk here. Uh, you will not be able to move. It will be so crowded that. Um, you will feel very, very much like you can get Corona very easily. So here's another entrance to the Shuk, which again, they're not letting people in. Otherwise I'd let us in. Here's a really cool. Um, there's the indoor Shuk where the party's actually happening. I guess, will there be bands? Yes, there will be bands. Um, basically, what happens is um, at some point, the bands start playing. Usually it's like 12.30, 1 o'clock until, uh, until about 5 or 6 in the morning. And then those who are very religious have to stay awake to stay in Megillah uh, in the morning. And those who don't care, go to bed. Ah, Rabbi Josh, look, I don't know if you're still on this call, but uh, here you go. This is Rabbi Josh's favorite place in Jerusalem, or one of Josh's. Just normal, normal behavior. Sometimes uh, I I wonder about the whole chosen people thing. Um, so now we're actually leaving the shuk, and uh, we're going down towards King George Street, where on Ben Yehuda there's another party. So literally two blocks away from each other. There's uh, parties happening. I would say that the Ben Yehuda party is more of like the younger family crowd. There, um, there are a lot more children and kids, even though there's still a lot of partying happening. Um, it's a different crowd. I hope this is entertaining. I, I'm, I'm entertained, but I can imagine sitting back in uh, San Diego, it's not, it might not be that entertaining. It is very um, entertaining. Oh, I don't hello. know who said that. Who just said that? Uh, hello. Ah, uh, hello. How are you? Doing well, thank you. All right. So my I'm plan now this is. Eventually. Oh, I've I'm been so happy. I'm to live a number of times, and this has changed so much. I mean, so much uh, commercialism. Commercialism in, in Jaffa was not nearly as much as, as I see here. Well, this is your I, birthday I... present, hello. Excuse me. <laughs> This is your birthday present, Hillel. Oh, okay. Well, I'll accept that. Where's the ribbon? <laughs> okay. Happy birthday. Happy okay. birthday. You're Thank you so lucky much. you can share a birthday with. Isn't it St. Patrick's Day as well? It's poor. Yeah. Of the no, the, but the most importantly, 
amazingly enough, when I was born, it was St. Patrick's Day and Purim simultaneously. Wow. Yes. Wow. I, I am told, I don't remember it. <laughs> Any any case of Lavila? Oh, here, look, I'm giving, he just gave me money to give him. Wow, what a mitzvah. That's like uh, the best. I've never seen someone give, someone who's asking for money, give someone money to give them back to do the mitzvah of Saka. Here he is. Hey, look, he's putting, he's asking people to take the money and put it back in. Um, I just want to say something really negative about this store right here. So this is like a suit store and they once hacked my Facebook and put up a picture of their store in, uh, on my Facebook, which was not very nice. That's why I'm okay by saying that it's a terrible place. Um, so yeah, so I feel very, it's very interesting what you say. So things have changed a lot in Jerusalem, obviously. Um, you know, I think what's very interesting is that it feels safe on the streets. I don't know, like, uh, if you were here in the early 2000s when bombs were blowing up and things like that, this would not, this probably would not be happening. And if it was, it was not on this level. Um, nowadays, there's just this overwhelming feeling of a little, like, of safety. Um, you know, tfu tfu. I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. But um, Jerusalem is really uh, kind of... Um, has turned into a more like a uh, safe city. I mean, it still has its issues with, with things, with terrorism and stuff, but not what it used to be. So, um, so I think we're, I mean, we're, we're heading to Ben Yehuda, but I'm not sure if uh, there's much happening there. So I'm gonna keep this turn like this, but um, right now I'm kind of in a dead spot. So maybe we'll learn a little bit of Torah while we're walking, um, a little bit about. So um, something that I often like to talk about, and I think we understand, is that everything we do and everything we say is kind of, it's kind of a costume. It's kind of clothing, right? When we express our thoughts and our feelings uh, in words or in any way, it's kind of a, already a costume. It's already a feeling that we... Um, clothed in our abilities to talk, to express ourselves. Tom uh, Shishi Glida. Here's the guy with us. So um, something that's very interesting about Forum is it's, all, it's actually more about truth. It's more about truth. Uh, even though it's all about dressing up, there's a lot more deep truth to it. Um, it's kind of accepting the fact that our outer selves are kind of costumes in general and clothing. And uh, here, look at this, these beautiful mosaics. <laughs> here we go. So now we're heading to Ben Yehuda. There's a very uh, famous um, Jewish quote, Nichnas yain yotze sod. When someone drinks wine, what comes out is the truth. And there's really funny stories of um, of uh, people who they like people who pretended to be dumb their whole lives because they didn't want to take credit for their genius, and they drink, and all of a sudden it comes out that they're actually Talmidei Chachamim. They're like Talmudic scholars, and uh, and so this is like a a fable that's told on Purim that. Um, that like a, the simple person that everyone thinks is simple ends up get, getting really drunk on the Suda and Purim and starts like quoting the Gemara and the Talmud uh, in ways that only a great scholar could. And, ever, and so that's like a very famous tale. All right, so here we are at Ben Yehuda. Here's a very, a very popular place, Melech HaChitz, basically a fries place, but it's like taking over Jerusalem. So here we are, we're heading now to, uh, you can see like the younger people are, all, are going to the, uh, the shuk, the market. And this is gonna be more like a family vibe on Ben Yehuda Street, I think. Uh, things might've changed. 
Um, Un Sameach, so that was. So here, Ron Ben Yehuda, it's a little quiet. But we'll make a lot. Look at this great costume. Feels like Venice during Carnival. Wow, now that is a costume. Thank God, Ariel and I, on our um, when we got engaged, flew to uh, Venice for Carnival, and I was able to experience. I was able to experience uh, what Carnival is like in Venice, and uh, I would say it's less. People are less drunk, but the costumes are unbelievable. Okay, so here's Ben Yehuda, and there's a party going on down there, and we'll walk towards it. Why not? So again, up the top of Ben Yehuda is King George Street. And we're walking down Ben Yehuda towards Jaffa again. You see a lot of dancing going on down there. I think this is called the, uh, the square of, of Zion, Kikar Sion and Chabad taking it over. It's really become like a very Chabadnik place, but also unbelievable things are happening in that square. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but people of different races, religions, sexes, and uh, sexual orientations get together and talk. And, and uh, it happens like it's, it's uh, facilitated by some very awesome people. All right, so here's a big dance. There's a, a big horror happening here. Enter. Yes. Was the area you were just speaking of the group with a wider bridge? Yes, yes. It's this guy again. Um, what Wider yeah. Bridge is an American group that's building um, links between LGBT uh, uh, programs in Israel and the states. It's a group called the Thursday Evening Group. I forget its Hebrew name. It started right after that woman was knifed at the Jerusalem Pride Parade, Shira Banki. And the woman who founded it lives both in Northern California on an apple farm and in Jerusalem. Hey, Seth, is that Rabbi Leibowitz is also, he does that as Rabbi well? Rabbi Leibowitz is active uh, in supporting them, yes. Aaron Leibowitz. Yeah. So, Rabbi, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the one I'm talking about. Um, so that's also happening. In, we're, in a minute, we're going to go to Zion Square, Kikatsion. Um, it won't be happening tonight, even though it's Thursday night, but that's an amazing um, project that's happening here in Jerusalem. Uh, and apparently it's been very successful. I mean, that's kind of typical of Jerusalem anyways. I, I've seen, I see that anyways on like a normal Thursday night here in Jerusalem. Here's that Squid Games, uh, there's a Squid Games guy. And here's a hot dog, kosher hot dogs. How the uh, what do they call it? The um, globalization of America. Here you go, hot dogs. Street, street, street food is now hot dogs. So there's a massive horror going on there. There, you know, Karen, I'm going to take you towards there. And maybe we'll get in uh, in the horror. And then I'm going to have to say good night. Um, because uh, I have to also get up and read Megillah tomorrow morning. Um, but uh, this will be our last stop. But here's the horror of Picard Sion. I wanna thank you all for letting me be your journalist. I mean, I guess I can add that to my resume, journalist. Look at this horror, wow, this is great. Woo, all right, I'm gonna turn you around, I'm gonna join it, and then we'll say goodnight and say hot to All right, here we go. Selfie, selfie. Hey, it's me, it's me. Oh, my God.
Now, the words are Misha Nikhna Sadar, one who goes into Adar gets Corona. No, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, unfortunately, maybe not. Um, so, yeah, here's the aura. I'm not gonna. Thank God I look like a skeleton. I feel like I'm not getting, you know, uh, pushed around as much. So um, that kind of concludes our Jerusalem tour of Shushan, a little bit different than uh, America on Purim. And I really appreciate all of you coming out and spending your Purim with me here. And uh, I hope next year we all get to celebrate Purim together here in Jerusalem, or maybe in Teferis, Israel, or maybe both. Maybe we can literally, remember last week in Tzfat, we learned about that synagogue that took off and ended up landing in Tzfat. So hopefully that's what the Ferris Israel will do. When we pray for it to happen, it will happen and we'll celebrate together uh, Purim here in Pura, uh, in uh, Jerusalem. I'm going to get myself a scotch and say goodnight. Thank you. Great, great job. Thank great you. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.